<laughs> would you believe it? I suspected there would be a problem. I've just come up uh, that path there, just a kilometre or so from where I parked the car. Had a bit of a walk along the road and then clearly marked bridleway. Not bridleway. You can see that from the previous clip, not bridleway at all. And I come up here on the map, marked as a bridleway, left turn, uh, ongoing, public right of way, and here we go, another fence in the way. I'll have a look around to see what other uh, way there is. But technically, this is a right of way. Well, I've looked around, there's no obvious uh, kind of redirection or anything. The right of way is this side of the little brook. So I think what I'm gonna do is head up and follow the uh, fence line, this side of the little brook, which is marked as the right of way. And then just 100 meters up here, it's uh, in the right to roam area anyway. So let's see what happens. Well, there's a gate. It's well and truly tied up and I don't fancy untying it, but there's no barbed wire. So uh, fairly easy to uh, skip over. And the right of way is literally up this side. So it's just up there. So over we go. Yeah, right. Well, the horses aren't going to get through there, are they? So uh, right away is this side of the little brook. So I'm going to head up here. Well, not many people come up this way. I'm not surprised with that fence and that bridle way being so difficult to navigate and walk along. It is clear on the map that it's a right of way. But as long as I can get out at the back of this kind of track here, always not even a track, and get into the open space above, I know I'm okay. <laughs> I got me irritated. All is fine, really. But there we are. Ah, oh, good views. Yeah, into the valley. So that uh, ridge, high, high ridge behind me, the other side of the valley, is the ridge that Neil and I uh, walked along back last November. Wan Fa. I can never pronounce that. Um, and all the way up and all the way down that we did, we did miles that day. Great trip. So we went up, I'll have to work out from the map exactly where we went up, but we went up and across Wan Fa and then back and then kind of a triangle route really. Excellent. We had a great day with Neil. Yeah, brilliant. However, up here's to go today. Up there, just there, just up there. Got to do it, up there. See it? Come on, let's do it. Well, all is okay. I've got to the top of this corner. I didn't know what to expect, but this is exactly where the bridleway ends and I'm now standing in the open access uh, land area no bridleway marked and I thought is there going to be another fence to climb but no no there's a, a small residue of path here and uh, no fence at all so from here there's different options of paths there's one left there's one right not really much of a track and there's a bit of a makeshift one straight up I want to gain height so I'm going <laughs> to use the straight up one uh, there we are and I'm heading up there I don't think I've said where I'm heading I got so irritated with that bridle way with the fences etc I'm heading up to the top of Minoid Minoid Troid I cannot pronounce that I'll put that on on screen um, bit of a loop route going to camp out on the high ground tonight obviously um, round and back tomorrow morning so a short night out uh, although it's already just gone four so I've only got the better part of an hour of light left so I do need to crack on but I can do that hi I'm Warren Brand and welcome to another Linley's video A 
and chill. Well, as you can see, I'm happily snuggled up in my tent. Blurry again, but I got my Sulu, so should be okay. Uh, I didn't film much on the way up that final bit. I lost the light in the last uh, 15, 20 minutes. Uh, pretty well difficult to exactly find a pitch in the dark. So I've, I am, um, I'm pitched up nicely. It's just on a little ledge overlooking the valley. Uh, I'll show you later on when there's light. Uh, immediately in, sorted all my gear and hot chocolate on. And that's what I'm enjoying now. I really am all snuggled up. I've got my sleeping bag out as well. Uh, good to stay warm. Right, let's look at uh, dinner for this evening. It's a basic one. It is a basic. It's uh, dehydrated, um, plus a couple of other bits. Okay, to start us off, I've uh, got a fire pot, good old fire pot. Uh, it's the spicy pork noodles. That's a good choice, that one. I like that one. One of my favourites. Uh, but again, it can be a bit dry. Uh, if you've seen other of my videos, you know that uh, I like a little bit more gravy, a bit more sauce. So I'm going to chuck in a sweet chilli and garlic uh, a compliment as well. So I'll heat that and pop that in as well um, while it's rehydrating. Um, what else have I got? Oh, a beer. Yes, I'll get the beer going. I've got that for breakfast, my porridge for breakfast. And for pudding, there's a couple of apple pies in there, in the box to keep them nice. And of course, custard as well. Yeah, time's moving on. So I think I'll just get on with uh, boiling up some water and getting my meal going. Cheers. Oh, it's a bit lively. That's okay. All cold too. Oh, a bit cold. This is good. Oh, ho, 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 ho. So 280 mil for 15 minutes. That'll be good. Making use of uh, James's Sussex Outdoors insulated pouch, of course. Still might add a little bit more water, but I'm gonna get my uh, sauce pot going now. That's looking good. I've added the sauce. See, there's nice gravy there now, nice nice sort of gravy sauce with that rather than it being kind of a dry dry kind of meal you can always add more water but it just goes runny that has got a nice gravy consistency it's good but what does it taste like i know what it tastes like because i've done this before mm. this down pouch keeps the food hot while it's rehydrating. Well, it's got a nice kick to it. <coughs> Where's my beer? Mm. Oh, come on, this is nice. I'm not sure Abbott Ale goes with it really, but that's what I've got. Oh yeah, fine. All is good. Right, I'm gonna fill my face with this. I'll get back to you in a bit. Yeah, I've just been looking at the map. Um, at the, uh, at the, uh, looking at that particular bit that I was getting a bit knocked at, uh, the right of way um, up from the road, the right of way, which I'm, I still think is the right, the right detail, correct. Uh, interpretation of the map right away up that path and then through a gate or something fence and then further up I lost about uh, half an hour maybe even 45 minutes faffing about with that going back and checking um, I was getting a bit irritated but you know it's happened before and I'm damn sure it'll happen again uh, it's hard to look on the map in the in the light here so 
I will get that up on screen at home and then have a look to see if there's anything else that might be a bit more current. That map's a 2016 version. So, I mean, that's a few years ago, but how often do maps come out? Um, and maybe the online one is even more up to date. I'll check that and maybe if, if there's anything of any note, I'll uh, stick that in the video now. Well, yes. Looking at the maps online back home, I now understand why I had difficulty making my way up from the road. And also, I realise there are other issues with an adjacent footpath, but more about that in a moment. OK, so after I got back to the car, I went back up the road and took this photo of where the bridleway leads off from the road. There's no mistaking, the finger post sign shows clearly the bridleway direction leading off up to the right, up the slope. For context, here is the most up-to-date OS online map of where the bridleway leads off to the left on the west side of the road. There's a five metre sort of way in and then a right turn marked by the finger post. I'm not sure what the date is of the online OS map, but my paper map is dated 2016 and has the same details as on the screen. Looking now at the street view on Google, the view is exactly the same, the wooden fence and the finger post pointing up the bridleway. Interesting though, there's no clear path up to the wooden gate, a scramble for a person and really difficult for a horse I'd say, off a busy main road near a bend. For reference, spot the road drain just here too. Now here, this is the view of exactly the same spot in June 2017. The wooden gate is just visible, just, but not at all usable. And this is September 2011, similar, and reference the road drain. Back in January 2009, so that's 15 years ago, the location looks similar to as it does now, with the old wooden gate and a difficult but possible way to get off the road. All very curious. And while I was walking back down the road, I noticed a partly hidden footpath sign on the eastern side. It was the old style that caught my eye. The finger post needed looking for. No way is this a used footpath. But what was it like in the recent past? Back on Google Maps, let's look at this location. In 2021, the path point looked like this, a little gap in a poorly maintained wooden fence. This is the view to the path point looking south, spot the telegraph pole. And this is the view looking north, the wooden pole is there. Obvious here, of course, see the continuous white road edge line. Using the power of Google Maps and Street View, I went back in time. This is 2017. Same wooden fence, same telegraph pole. Do you see a difference though? Can you spot a change? Yes, the white line is not a continuous line there. It's dashed. Odd, I thought. And again in 2015, Odd that the footpath has been forgotten for so long. Is it not needed? Where did it go? But then the scene changes dramatically going back to 2011 and becomes really interesting. There's a driveway turning right at this spot. No mistaking, the dashed white lines are there. Now I understand why. Google Street View goes back to 2009 and the driveway to the farm is very much there. So what happened to it? The online OS map shows how a driveway joins the main road right here. The footpath is right by where the driveway is. 
And then looking at Google Maps with satellite view turned on, it's clear that the driveway's been reshaped to join the main road about 50 metres further south. Easier gradient up from the farm, I assume, and away from the bend in the main road, so safer. But what about the footpath? Is it still a legal right of way? Does it legally or at all practically exist? Whose responsibility is it to keep it clear? Is it like the bridleway that I wanted to use on the way out of existence because of tied up gates, tall fences, unkept tree growth and a lack of interest in using it? But this is me after the event. I'm still in my tent and about to tuck into my pudding. Let's spring back to being in the tent and continue with the story there. Yeah, custard time. Lovely. Now I've just got the one apple pie. I've got the other one still in this box. I'll either have it with a hot chocolate later or might have it with my breakfast. It just seemed with a whole pot of uh, custard by myself it just seemed a bit too much time has gone by it's uh i think it's about quarter to ten now and the wind has dropped at least here i am slightly sheltered here the path uh is is about probably about 25 30 meters just over there and i'm on a slight uh, lower portion of like a almost like a plateau uh, and the wind is coming across from that way, so I'm slightly protected, which is good. Slightly different for me because I usually put my tent right on the top. I'll finish this and then get back to you. Well, time has drifted by. It's uh, just after 11 now. I didn't have another hot chocolate, uh, so I'll have a... Uh, extra little mince pie in the morning for breakfast uh, with my porridge and coffee but sleepy days uh, i've had a doze already actually but i've just been out checked all the lines done the final bits and time for sleep really so i'll catch you in the morning night Good morning. I've actually mostly packed up torrential rain this morning, but hey, whatever. I had a lazy start. I've had my breakfast. I just let it, let the rain happen. And then it stopped raining. It's still claggy. So I'm just halfway through uh, packing up my tent. We're off in a moment. Yep, as if by magic, moments later, all packed up, leaving no trace, of course. Uh, here we go. <laughs> I was in that little kind of hollow. Not a lot of space, but enough. Enough, even for my Sulu. Right, this used to be some sort of quarry, just off the top ridge. The top ridge is, is just a few more meters up there. Uh, so, quarry or mine. I'm not going anywhere near it, whatever. Although hopefully mines have got uh, their shafts capped off, okay. Yeah, I'm just gonna regain the path just along the top here, heading to the top of Minotroid. It's burning on the screen. Yep. Well, at least the rain has mostly stopped. The mist, well, it's here, <laughs> still. However, it's 
really odd when it's completely clagged out. I can't see more than about 20 meters, probably. Barely even that. I could just see the skyline, maybe 50. But uh, it's quite eerie, really. I can imagine really, really scary if you actually don't know where you are or you don't know which direction to go. Uh, I mean, to be in that situation is, well, hard to imagine how you do, I suppose. Map, compass, must have that. So, but then if you don't actually know where you are, not kept a sort of a track of where you are and therefore in a way lost, I don't know. Uh, navigation. Navigation's important. I know where I am. Uh, I reckon I've got, what did I say back there, about 22 minutes from the last uh, checkpoint to my next checkpoint. Uh, I'm looking at my watch just now, 22 minutes, so I will absolutely check again uh, in 22 minutes. Well, what was 22 minutes? Uh, where am I expect to be? I'm looking for trick point. Trig point is easy to spot as long as you're in the right place, obviously. back again in some good weather. bit more sheltered here for a few moments. My goodness, it was wickedly windy up on top. I couldn't have uh, said anything, you just wouldn't have heard me. Uh, doing good. We're doing well, going down this track now. Um, then the road and then back to the car. So Langors Lake is just there. Yeah, and back to the road, I can see it now. That is good. Well, you don't have to follow me plodding along the tarmac for a couple of kilometers, do you? So I think I'll leave you here for the time being and pick you up again at another time. Stay safe. <laughs> Thank you for sticking with me. Always say that. Walk these treks on my own most of the time. It's nice to know that at least I'm not talking to myself. <laughs> right, well, from the bleak, 
blustery Brecon Beacons. Thanks for watching and bye for now.